Welcome back, folks, to our weekly NeoVim plugin video. In this series, we are covering one NeoVim plugin a week, and this week we have Bufferline, bufferline.nvim. Um, Bufferline is really neat. Uh, I, I would think that you it's almost essential to my workflow because uh, I need to see the buffers that I have open uh, very quickly, and Bufferline allows you to do that. So let's take a look at how it looks. I'm here in the GitHub repository for bufferline.nvim. Um, they have this really cool image of what bufferline looks like. So bufferline is this kind of tab looking like UI up at the top of your buffer or the top of your NeoVim program. And it shows you what buffer you have active. It can tell you things like the type of file that it is with this little icon here. And uh, it also gives you the option to click on the little X if you wanna close that specific buffer. And you can switch between these different buffers pretty easily as well. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to install Bufferline using Packer. Uh, Packer is the package manager that we've been using in this, in this video series. And we're also gonna look at how to configure Bufferline, not just to look like this, but also to um, create an offset for MVim tree, if you have MVim tree installed. And we'll show you what that looks like as well. And then we're gonna go into some useful commands like how to pick a buffer and uh, how to close some buffers. So I'll move this over to the side and we can go ahead and get started. Whoop, all the way there. And let me turn off my video camera. All right, so I'm in my init.lua file. In here, you'll notice that I have uh, a few require statements. One of them is plugins, and the other one is plugin configs. So because I'm using Packer, if we go into the plugins file, so I'll use my handy dandy harpoon um, plugin to go in there. If we go into the plugins file, you can see there's a bunch of use statements in here. That's because this is how Packer requires us to write um, these installation directives. So use, and then the name of the plugin will help us or will tell Packer to install that plugin. So here at the bottom, we have use, I can show buffer line. So I already have that here commented. I'm gonna uncomment this using GCC. That's the comment plugin that we talked about a few videos ago. That'll automatically comment, uncomment lines. And uh, that's it for installation. Now uh, I'll save that and we can go into plugin configs. Plugin configs is where I like to keep all of my plugin configurations to configure Bufferline. So we'll go all the way to the bottom here. Uh, and I already have a few lines written to configure Bufferline. So let's go ahead and select those lines in visual mode and hit GC. That'll uncomment all of those lines. All right. So uh, what do we have going on here? We have mode buffers. This means that we're using buffer line with buffers. You could use it with other things like tabs. Now keep in mind that buffers and tabs in, in Vim are not the same thing. Um, so when we're talking about buffer line and mode buffers here, we're not talking about having tabs. Yes, I understand there can be some confusion. It does look like tabs, but we're not talking about tabs here. We're talking about buffers which is kind of like a temporary place in memory where we have all of our text before it becomes a file, before we save it and it becomes a file. So that's what we're talking about, buffers. Anyway, so let's get back to it. You could do diagnostics here if you wanted to. We're going to leave this off. We haven't talked about LSPs or we haven't talked about um, any of these code completion plugins. So we're going to leave that off for now. Uh, and then offsets. Okay, so offsets is uh, kind of an interesting concept here. We're gonna say file type nvim tree because nvim tree is the plugin that we're using for our file manager, you can see here. This is our, our uh, file structure that we're using. We're using nvim tree for that plugin. So uh, the text that we're gonna have above this file explorer tree Right here, it's going to be, it's going to appear right here once we restart NeoVim. It's going to be File Explorer. And the highlight is going to be the directory. And we're going to say separator true. We're just going to give it a little, a nice little separator between this offset and the rest of our buffer line. 
All right, so that's all there is to it for com for uh, configuration. Um, key mappings. Yes, let's set some key mappings. So I'll open up Harpoon again, where I have the key mappings file marked, and I'll go ahead and hit enter to navigate into that file. Uh, Shift G to go all the way down, and you can see here I already have a line for one of my key mappings. So let's uh, uncomment that with GCC, and the buffer or excuse me, the key mappings that I'm defining here are leader BL. And let me move that over to this side as well. Leader BL, so leader buffer line. That's the way I like to think of it. And it invokes buffer line pick. And we'll see what this looks like here in a little bit. All right, so we have everything. We have the, the use directive, we have the plugin configured, and we have the key mapping set. I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and close in the OVIM. All right, it says I didn't save save that, so I'm going to go ahead and save it and reopen the OVIM. Now, it's going to say module buffer line not found because we're trying to configure buffer line before we install it. So that's okay. Hit Q to get rid of that message here and go back into uh, command mode here and type packer install. Packer install. So that's going to install Bufferline, and, and you see here that uh, we have successfully installed Bufferline. Great. Awesome. Hit Q to quit, and let's go ahead and reload NeoVim again. Awesome. Okay. Well, what's different? Well, you might have noticed that we have this up here now, uh, the name of the file, init.lua, and... Uh, yeah, that's it, because that's the only buffer I have open at the moment. So let's open up some other files. Do HM and open up Harpoon. And let's open up the key mappings, see what happens. Well, now you can see here that another kind of uh, tab looking like uh, UI element has appeared here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's open up yet another file. How about we open up plugin configs? Oh, okay, yeah, another tab there or tab-like looking element. And then let's open up plugins. Oh, okay, so now I have init.lua, key mappings Lua, plugin configs Lua, and plugins Lua here in my buffer line. That's pretty cool. All right, so remember when we configured that offset for MVIM tree? Well, let's open up MVIM tree with control N. And well, wow, that's cool. You can actually see file explorer, the text that we've configured here in the buffer line as an offset to the rest of the buffer line. So I like this, it looks really clean. You can kind of now see that, hey, yeah, this part of the window is my file explorer. Um, so it's just a really cool, neat feature that I really like. So this only works, I think, only if you have NVIM tree installed. It may work for some other um, file tree plugins, but I'm not entirely sure. All right. Let's close MVIM tree and let's go into usage. So now that I have these four buffers in my buffer line, how would I switch between them? Well, I can do leader BL and you notice that as soon as I hit leader BL, these little uh, key mappings or you can call them identifiers have popped up. So now Bufferline is waiting for input from me. So I need to choose I, K, P, or A. If I choose I, you can see here now we're in init.lua. So it's a quick way to navigate between the different buffers. Buffers. Let's show that again. Leader BL. And you see here that the identifiers have appeared. And I'm going to click or um, hit P now to go to plugin configs. All right, plugin configs is open. So that's pretty cool. You can. Um, show those identifiers using leader BL and quickly navigate between your buffers. Now, if you wanted to close, maybe this is getting a little too messy. You've opened up a whole bunch of files because you're, you know, you're going to definition that opens automatically opens up a new buffer. So what if it's getting a little too, too messy for you? Well, you can use the command buffer close or buffer line close others. That'll close all of the other buffers that you do not have currently open. So that's just a nice quick way to uh, kind of clean this up. All right, well, 
that has been Bufferline. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next week.